my roast dinner a minute because it is a Sunday. Fuck your mother for the roast dinner. Got a little bit left. I'll get tidied up here. Any tap inside of your house. Oh, let me just set it all up. Four inch drain lines coming from the bottom of the pond. So all I do now is I turn this valve off. As soon as it starts filling over the top here, any water that's coming through the bottom of the drains, because I'm still running two pumps through one line. Get that down your neck, boy. And then it runs through the big blue. This connection sits like this now. Run you through my Sunday day, really. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. James the Koi Whisperer. So um, today, coming up on this video, it's one of those Sunday videos again. So I've got a crack and roast dinner on the go. I've got a few jobs to do today. I've got to do a water change on the tank. I'm just gonna show you a demonstration of the new water changer that I've got for that. Anyone that keeps fish tanks, it's definitely a decent investment to have a look at anyway. So I've got a few jobs on the koi pond as well. I've got to go inside the filter house, check the pH. I've got to buffer up the KH a little bit. On that note, let's just crack on with the video. and I'll be back with you shortly. Right then, so uh, inside the filter house, water temperature is at the moment, 11 degrees, TDS of 80, pH of 7.2. So I've got to buffer up my KH a little bit today. I do this weekly. I use the famous sodium bicarbonate. I like to buffer it on a Sunday. This time of year when I'm not feeding a lot, I don't really need to do much during the week. But just on the Sunday, I do like to do that. I was going to do a little water test as well, just to see where I'm at with some of the ammonia there she is right so this is what i use to buffer up my kh buffering up the kh i find out to keep my ph nice and stable when i'm feeding a lot more i tend to do it a lot more often literally just use roughly around that much grab me mixing bowl and me stirrer just keep all the items on there really makes it nice and easy for myself I just takes a little bit from the pond, from the skimmer, should I say. Drop that down there. Add that into there. Don't weigh it out. What I do, I just literally measure up to the line. I fill it to this mark inside, and uh, I just do the same every week. But I do obviously monitor what's going on with the pH itself, and then I'll do a KH test later on this evening just to make sure everything's tickety boom where i like to keep it i like to keep the kh of roughly around 1.5 you mix it up like so give that one a bit of a rinse off in there because it doesn't matter if you get a bit of extra on it i'll put it down near my drain just for drying off purposes i shall go and add this to the pond i mean everyone's different when you come to using bicarbonate soda it's all dependent on where you live in the world, where you live in the country, because everyone's tap water supply is completely different and it all depends what comes out your tap water to what you actually have to do to your water quality or add to your water, should I say. I just like spreading it over the whole pond. Got a little bit left, look. Got a little bit left. It's a little bit easier with the aeration on because I find it mixes it up a little bit faster. I'll just grab a coffee and then I'll go and check the KH just to see where we're at on the KH meter. But everyone's doing really well still. Surprising these winters take a, they seem to drag on a little bit to be fair. With my situation, with what I've got going on, really enjoying getting back into the hobby again. Keeping myself busy by doing little bits, tinkering around. So I find it's do doing me really well to be fair with you guys wanted to thank everyone for all of the support people keep giving me as well but i'll get tidied up here and i'll be back with you shortly so one other thing i'm doing on a sunday is i like to make sure i'm cleaning out my bottom drains i have got two four inch drain lines coming from the bottom of the pond and i like to make sure i'm flushing them through and i use one to purge off against the other and the way that i do that this time of year because all of the pumps are running down really slow as you can see at the moment, inside of my bio filter, you can see it's filled to the very top. You can see the drum filled to the top and it's just running through. There's not much speed going on there. And the way that I do mine is that I turn off one valve with my foot. What I like to do is I like to ramp up the pumps to maximum. 
It will get quite noisy in here. I do apologise about that just because of the sound of the pumps are running flat out. I generally use both hands to do this and I'll do both at the same time and I'll just crank them right up to maximum flow and what that does I'll just turn it round here you can see it start emptying the bile unit because it's only pulling through one line one drain line and in effect these pumps can pull 30,000 litres an hour each you do lose a little bit of that down to the fact of the pumps are pulling and where they're pushing the water to but what I'm getting at is that they're running as fast as they possibly can go. The system itself can't keep up because I'm pulling through too much water too quickly. If you had a purge line where you could just open up a ball valve on your pond, where instead of flowing it through your system, you're flowing it out down straight to waste, down to a drain. Well, I do it, but I bring it all through the drum itself. This system's lowering itself as well. And what you'll find in a second but the system won't be able to keep up and it will start overflowing here because of the fact of all of the water in the bio unit is returned to the pond and then what I'll do is open up this drain line because at the moment I'm pulling everything through this one line so I'm pulling 60,000 litres an hour of water through that one drain line at the moment inside of the drum is really uh, struggling to keep up so what I'll do I just get down here as well and I shut off both lines like so. So now I'll empty the bile unit completely. This will cause the drum to empty. Soon as it starts filling over the top here, like it is now, this goes down into the drain. That's as much as I want to do. I've emptied it from the drum and I'll keep you on here and I'll open up both lines at the same time. And you can see the influxuation of water running through this drum now. It's running absolutely flat out. And then it means that any water that's coming through the bottom of the drains, or if there's any muck build up in the drains, it's just flushed itself right through. Then what I do now is I just turn down the speed of the pumps again. So everything's running nice and slow, back to standard speed. And it just assures me that there's no build up in the bottom drains any waste is built up or that hasn't managed to pass just down to the flow rates that I'm running at the moment if I only had one line running it wouldn't really matter too much because I'm still running two pumps through one line you're supposed to flow a minimum for a four inch pipeline you're supposed to flow a minimum of 15,000 litres an hour of water through it well I'd just like to make assured that I've cleared out my bottom drain line. I've basically flattened out the system so the lines can't keep up. So in my eye, my head, my mind, the way I see it is that if that there is running flat out and it can't keep up with the system, if there was any muck or any build up in the bottom of those drains, then it would have just flushed itself right through by me opening up the valves at the same time. And as you can see, see itself, there's, there was no muck coming through there. I know I'm not feeding at the moment, but it was just a reassurance of just in case there is any waste or any matter down there. Something I do every week. And then when I shut the lid, the drum will go on a clean system because it's, it has lowered past the, uh, the stop cock, which triggers the drum to turn on and off. And there she goes. She's gone herself off on a clean and it will catch itself back up. And it just reassures me that the, all the, the pipelines are all nice and clean the bile unit filled back up again and uh, everything's running an absolute dream so happy days there's that job done looks like i do have to give the window a bit of a clean off today you can definitely tell the difference with the temperature there's still the condensation in the morning build up on the actual uh, on the pond window itself i need to get off a little bit of this algae today just a little bit of a build up on the bottom and I, in my mind, keep it clean, stays clean. But I did think about investing in, I've been using this tank cleaner and it seems to be working all right, but it's not quite man enough for the job. Window cleaning brush that I've used. But I was thinking about maybe an idea this year of using, like they do with the fish tanks, where they use a Stanley knife blade attached to a tool and you can just scrape the, the algae straight off. So. I might give that a go at some point, see if I can make something or come up with an idea. We'll just look to see how much they cost and we'll go from there. But it was just another one of my 
little ideas. I thought they use it in the tank world in keeping fish tanks. And apparently it's the best way of cleaning tanks. That's the, the glass itself, should I say. So I thought I'll maybe give this a go and see how I get on with that. I'll best go and prep my roast dinner a minute because it is a Sunday. And with, without a roast dinner, it ain't a proper Sunday, is it? So I'm going to crack on with that. Just, just take a look at this for a second. Right, let's get this roast dinner all prepped up. Bosh, there we have it, all prepped. Lovely bit of leg of lamb, roast chicken, bit of stuffing with a couple of pork and leek sausages. Got to have the famous pigs and blankets. Got me vegetables, because you need your five a day. And boom, they're gonna be the roast teddies. Right, homemade gravy coming up too. But you've got to have a bit of goose fat on your teddies. Thank your mother for the roast dinner. Bosh. Right, so as I showed you on the last video, I set my tank back up. I give a little bit of an update on this tank. And basically, it's uh, once a week, I do my water changes. And this is what I wanted to show you in the video. So I'm gonna open up this. I did have a couple questions. What pump do I use on the tank? And uh, the filter itself is an FX6. When I bought this about six years ago, I paid 149 pound for it. When I was in the aquarium the other week and I was looking at these fancy goldfish, this filter's gone up to 300 quid now. It's absolutely criminal, man. But yeah, I was well shocked. 150 pound I paid for it six years ago and now it's double the price. But we're talking about this. So let's crack on. Right then, so a lot of you probably know they've seen these siphons before. The old fashioned way of cleaning out your tanks where you just have a small piece of hose. You give the other end of the hose a bit of a suck you create a siphon. Sometimes you end up with a little bit what goes in your mouth. Well, those days are completely gone. So this kit really is all exactly the same as the normal siphoning system or the cleaning funnels, what are available. The perks with this kit is this little attachment on here. What this does, it has a two way valve on it. Not sure what this bit's called. This bit here attaches to your mains water supply. With this valve being turned off, will directly flow straight back up around and around and around and around. And then if this part's in your tank, what happens is that it fills your tank up, which is perfect. But for cleaning your tank and draining your tank off, what it does, it siphons the opposite way. So the water supply coming to the tap this way, you turn that off and then you just turn this one on like that. And then the water would drain out of the tank, around, 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 and then it flows out of the tank the idea of it is that you can attach it to your kitchen tap any tap inside of your house but what i like to do is because i've got a dechlorinated system you know when you need an extra inch everyone needs that little extra inch sometimes if you know what i mean so this system that i've got is about three inches short what i do part of the reason why i added this tap so i just turn off the tap here unplug I plug this one on, put this one down here. I turn the tap back on. That allows the water to return out of there again. Because I've got a drain system in here anyway, any water waste that comes down through runs into this drain, goes into there and goes into the soak away, which I've dug and buried underground. So what I do with this, I just carry this outside. That comes down here like this. So this part goes on to the end there. Let me just try to do this one-handed. This connection sits like this now. I've just turned this valve off. And what this does now is it fills up the whole pipe. I hold on to this system with making sure that it's off to start with. Check down the hose. It's also quite handy because if any of the fish swim up it, they can't get all the way up anymore. What I like to do, just wait out here until the water from the pond fills up all of this. Because I've got the flow rates running so slow, all I do with the ball valve in here, I just turn it up slightly and I check that by how fast the water's flowing through my meter. I know it's still not going crazy fast. Just adjust it to where I need it to be. 
So my water that I'm putting to my tank runs through the three stage to chlorinator and then it runs through the big blue which runs outside here. This is the system that's going to be filling up my tank and draining off my tank but to start with I just fill it up. We're filling up so now the whole line itself is completely full of water. I just turn this valve off to stop the flow of water coming through the system. I carry this to my tank. So now she's siphoning off an absolute dream and it's minimal work to be fair with you guys. It looks harder than what it is because I'm trying to film it and do it one handed. It's very difficult at times, but what it allows me to do now, I've just give over the tank a bit of a run through. Just give you a demonstration of that. So if you put it on the gravel itself, you can see it sucking up the gravel so you just plod around the tank cleaning all the bits of poop what's left and yeah it works an absolute dream i'm really impressed with the system i find that it works really well for me what i like to do i drain it off roughly around i use my heater that i've got set there because i've got it sat on the tank and it never moves it never moves place the individual dials on it I use as a marker. So I like draining the, from this side of the tank, I like draining it down to the first marker. And that works out roughly around 10% of water, water volume, what's in the tank. Something that I do every Sunday. And I find it just helps keep the water quality good. You can see it just drains off here like so. This is just draining water directly from my tank. And then when I come to refill the tank, all I've got to do is turn that valve off and then turn that tap back on. And then what that there does is fills up my tank with clean, healthy, dechlorinated, fresh water. I'm at me mark, so I turn the valve off. So I'll shut the valve off like so. And then all I do, is turn the tap back on and then we're filling up as you can see now the water's returning back up through this way clean healthy fresh water and we're filling back the tank this is what's not simple is me trying to show you one-handed so i'll just to show you a demonstration that we've got fresh water trickling in to the tank which has been running through the dechlorinator the only thing that I found a little trick that you have to do is when you first put this tool back into the tank, you just got to tilt it up slightly to let the air come out. Once the air comes out, it will sit down on itself and it will just stay there like so. All I do now is I turn this valve off to stop any of the water draining back the opposite way. And the, the best advantage with this is that there's no mess, there's no buckets, there's no water anywhere. It's all in the tube, it's all in the siphon. I carry this outside to my garden. I open up the valve, the drain valve now. I disconnect my line. Disconnect my line that way. So this one gets packed away, simple as that. If you turn this line on, and then as you're folding it away, pack your pipe away, and then all the, the water what's left inside of the pipe, all of the, the water is completely drained out of the pipe, and then I just go and pack this away in the box. It saves a lot of mess, a lot of time, and does an amazing job. It's not a sponsored video. Just check it out on Amazon. I'll try and leave a link at the bottom of the video or something. Well, thank your mother for the roast dinner. Hallelujah. Let's just gravy it up, son. Mmm. Homemade gravy. Lovely. Well, I almost forgot. I ain't forgetting. Ha, ah, that's hot. Got to have them. Bosh. Bosh. Bosh, bosh. Now that is how you do it. Happy days. Thank your mother for the Sunday. Roast dinner there, boy. Roast dinner's ready, son. Get that down your neck, boy. Just got in from work. What do you reckon?
And thank you very much for cleaning up, love, because I do make a bit of a mess, don't I? Yeah. Right, so let's get well, stuck in. I ain't gonna lie. That's what you call a proper Sunday. A decent dinner, all the filters done, all of the pond maintenance, tank maintenance, everything done out, done and dusted out of the way by half past 12. How about that? So um, that's about, about me finding a balance of what I'm doing now. It gives me time to edit a video. It gives me time to spend time with the family. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you because a lot of you guys know I like making these videos. I like sharing what I do. I like sharing what's going on. But I wanted to end the video here because it's just a sweet Sunday video. And uh, well, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you can like the video for me, please give it a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Plenty more content to come. I'm planning a new little quarantine build pond, which is going to be over there. And yeah, that's all to come in the future. But for now, guys, stay safe. And uh, well, have a, have a brilliant rest of your weekend. See you on the next one. That's me, James the Koi Whisperer. <laughs>